The story of Ryan Fitzpatrick, possibly the most interesting and entertaining journeyman quarterback in the NFL in recent memory. In his 16th season, Fitzpatrick has played for eight different teams, and his longest time on the same team was four seasons in Buffalo from 2009 to 2012. The 37-year-old Fitzpatrick was recently benched in favor of 2020's fifth overall pick, Tua Tungavailoa, and despite having the Dolphins at 3-3 three and three and playing well, the Dolphins had a plan in place for this to happen. In his comments, Fitzpatrick admitted he was heartbroken and felt like this was his team, so clearly he did not see this coming at this time. Being 37, it'd be hard to imagine him opening up as a team starter for a different team, assuming that Tua stays healthy, but crazier things have happened in the NFL. With that being said, let's go into the football career of the great Ryan Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick was an economics student at Harvard and started five games between 2001 and 2002. In 2003, Fitzpatrick was the full-time starter and finished his junior year with 1,770 yards, 16 touchdowns, and eight interceptions. In 2004, Fitz was named the Ivy League Player of the Year as Harvard's football team went 10-0, while Fitzpatrick threw for under 2,000 yards, 13 touchdowns, six interceptions. He also added 440. 48 rushing yards and five touchdowns on the ground. After his college career and entering the NFL draft process, he took the Wonderlic test, which measures prospects' cognitive ability and problem solving. Fitzpatrick put up the third highest Wonderlic score in NFL history, getting a 48 out of 50. After nearly going undrafted, he was fortunate enough to get drafted in the seventh round by the St. Louis Rams at 250 overall. Fitzpatrick entered his 2005 rookie season as the third string quarterback, but sometimes being a journeyman quarterback, you'll need some luck to see some playing time, and that's exactly what happened his rookie year. Rams starter Mark Bolger hit IR with a shoulder injury, and their backup Jamie Martin was injured in a game at Houston. Fitzpatrick entered in the second quarter and the Rams down 24-3 at halftime. Somehow, he led a comeback win in a 33-27 overtime victory, and that's how Fitzmagic was born. He even earned NFC Offensive Player of the Week honors during his first game action. In his first game action, Fitz went 19-30, 310 yards, three passing touchdowns, and one interception. He started the next three games, making him the first Harvard quarter quarterback to start a game in the NFL. The story of Fitzpatrick's career highlights a lot of highs and lows, and just a couple weeks later, against the Vikings, he had a five interception game. He was benched at halftime the following week in favor of the original backup Jamie Martin and never ended up starting for the Rams again. He sat the bench the entire 2006 season except for one appearance in a blowout victory, and right before the 2007 season, Fitzpatrick was traded to the Bengals in exchange for a 7th round pick. The Bengals still had Carson Palmer and played in all 16 games, so once again Fitzpatrick did not see any meaningful playing time. At this point, it's been over two full seasons since Fitzpatrick received an NFL start. In the 2008 offseason, Fitz signed a one-year deal to stay in Cincinnati, and this time Palmer was not healthy, missing 12 games that season with an elbow injury. Fitz received 12 starts for the Bengals going 4-7-1 during that time. His 2008 stats were 1,905 passing yards, a 59% completion percentage, 8 passing touchdowns, 9 interceptions, only 4.5 yards per attempt, and a 70 quarterback rating. He did add 304 yards on the ground along with two rushing touchdowns, which might not seem like a lot in today's NFL, but in 2008, that was the third most rushing yards for a quarterback that season. Obviously, the Bengals missed the playoffs that season, but on the bright side, his 12-game showcase earned him a three-year, $7.4 million contract with the Buffalo Bills. The Bills were coming off a 7-9 season, last place in the AFC East, but they had 26-year-old quarterback Trent Edwards as their starting quarterback. Edwards was a former third-round pick but had his struggles in the NFL up until that point. Edwards went down with an injury in Week 6, and Fitzpatrick came in to lead the Bills to an overtime victory over the Jets. He would go on to start the remaining games that season, putting up a 4-4 record with 1,422 passing yards, 9 passing touchdowns, 10 interceptions, a 55% completion percentage, and only a 69 quarterback rating. He did, however, throw the longest touchdown in Bills history with a 98-yarder to future Hall of Famer Terrell Owens, which happened to be the longest reception of Owens' career as well. The Bills had a new head coach in 2010 with Chan Gailey, who decided to go with Trent Edwards once again to start the season. The Bills started 0-2, and Edwards was quickly pulled in favor of Fitzpatrick. This was the first year where Fitz showed consistent success, throwing for exactly 3,000 yards, 23 touchdowns, and 13 starts. The Bills finished with a record of 4-12, but Fitz went 4-9, which I guess is a little better. This was the same season of the infamous Stevie Johnson drop touchdown in overtime versus Pittsburgh in an eventual loss, which pretty much highlighted the Bills' 2010 season in a nutshell. The good news for Fitzpatrick is that the next year he finally showed enough to be named the Week 1 starter after five seasons in the NFL at that point. 
2011 had its ups and downs like any typical Fitzpatrick season where he led the league in interceptions with 23, but also threw for 24 touchdowns. He did set new career highs in passing yards with over 3,800 and a completion percentage of 62%. The Bills did have an exciting start to the year going 3-0 and eventually 4-1. In week 3, they had one of their biggest wins in years in a 37-34 victory against the division rival Patriots. Fitzpatrick earned AFC Player of the Month honors in September and a few weeks later inked a six-year $59 million extension with the Bills. Eventually, the team and Fitzpatrick came back down to earth, and they went 3-10 the rest of the way to finish at 6-10 on the year. The contract, while it looked good, was easy for Buffalo to get out of, and Fitzpatrick would see the consequences of that sooner than later. In 2012, Fitz opened up as Buffalo starter for the second consecutive season. He had a respectable individual season, throwing for over 3,400 yards, 24 touchdowns, and 16 interceptions. The then 30-year-old put up his best quarterback rating in a season at 81 and improved at not turning the ball over as much. However, Chan Gailey was fired as Buffalo's head coach, and all of a sudden Fitzpatrick's future as a Bill seemed a bit bleak. In the 2013 offseason, Buffalo got out of Fitzpatrick's contract and released him to later draft future bust EJ Manuel, 16th overall, to take his place. Fitzpatrick landed in Tennessee on a two-year deal to back of Jake Locker, a former 8th overall pick in 2011's draft. Locker had shoulder surgery the previous season and hadn't proven anything in the NFL in his 16 games up until that point. After a week 4 injury to Locker, Fitzpatrick stepped in later in the game and only had 8 pass attempts but threw a 77-yard touchdown to wide receiver Nate Washington. Fitz started 9 games while appearing in 11 total. He produced mixed results as usual, throwing for 2,400 yards, 14 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, and an 82 quarterback rating. Fitzpatrick was released for a second consecutive season, this time by Tennessee in favor of Jake Locker and Charlie Whitehurst, aka Clipboard Jesus. As usual, Fitzpatrick landed on his feet, this time signing a two-year deal with the Houston Texans. The Texans moved on from longtime quarterback Matt Schaub and entered the 2014 season with a lot of quarterbacks like Case Keenum, Ryan Mallett, Tom Sanders, Savage, and of course, Ryan Fitzpatrick. This was the first season of Bill O'Brien in Texas, and he actually named Fitz his week one starter in 2014. He did not play that badly that season, but was benched in early November in favor of the younger Ryan Mallett. Mallett would sustain a pectoral injury just a few weeks later, so then it was back to Fitz. Fitz had a big FU moment to his former Titans team from the season prior when he tossed all over them for a franchise record six touchdowns, along with 358 passing yards and a 147 quarterback rating. He was the AFC Player of the Week, but sustained a season-ending injury in mid-December, missing the last couple starts of 2014. He'd end the season going 6-6 six six as the starter with 2,483 passing yards, 17 touchdowns, and only 8 interceptions. Although it was a promising season, Fitzpatrick was now 32 years old and wasn't viewed as the future of the franchise, which is an unfortunate reality he'd have to face the rest of his career, basically. During the 2015 offseason, Fitz went to his fourth team in four years, this time being traded to the Jets for a late-round pick. The expectations were for Fitzpatrick to be a backup to former second round pick Geno Smith, but as we know, sometimes Fitzpatrick ran into some luck for opportunities during his career. It's funny because in many cases, backup quarterbacks rarely see the field and maybe get to play a few games at most if they're lucky. In Fitzpatrick's case, he defied the odds, always ending up on a team where the quarterback position was always in question or the guy in front of him seemed to get hurt just about every time. Anyway, this incident outweighs the rest as Jets presumed starter Geno Smith was punched in the face by his own teammate in a locker room altercation, suffering a broken jaw and missing the early part of the season. Fitzpatrick was then given the nod to be the starter in place of the injured Smith and even got to reunite with his former Buffalo head coach Chan Gailey who was now the OC for the Jets. 2015 was arguably the best season of Fitzpatrick's career and the 33 year old who was only supposed to be a backup started all 16 games leading the Jets to a 10-6 record. He put up an impressive 3,900 passing yards, a career-high 31 passing touchdowns, and 15 interceptions. The Jets with the combination of Fitzpatrick, Eric Decker, and Brandon Marshall were a scary offense for opposing defenses that season. The Jets entered a Week 17 game at Buffalo, one of Fitzpatrick's former teams, with a chance to earn a playoff spot with a win. The Bills were 7-8 and technically had nothing to play for, but due to the fact that Buffalo's head coach was former Jets head coach Rex Ryan, you can imagine he had his guys fired up to play that game. Game. And fired up they were as the Jets, in typical Jets fashion, lost 22-17 behind a three-interception performance by Fitzpatrick himself. The Jets were on a five-game winning streak, rattling off some impressive victories in that stretch, including
including a Week 16 overtime win versus the Patriots, but the Bills found a way to put an end to the Jets' season. Fitz was without a contract in the 2016 offseason, and there was a long standoff between him and the Jets' front office. Most teams had their quarterback situation settled, but the Jets needed a quarterback and Fitzpatrick still needed a team. Fitz earned himself a $12 million fully guaranteed deal for one season, but this time around it did not go nearly as well. In 2016, the Jets went from 10-6 and to 5-11, and and nothing about Fitzpatrick looked the same as the season prior. He put up a disappointing 12 touchdowns and 17 interceptions, a 56% completion percentage, and a quarterback rating of 69. The season started off okay, going 1-1, one and, one, and Fitz even won AFC Offensive Player of the Week in Week 2, but Week 3 is when the bottom completely fell out. The Jets had a staggering 8 turnovers against Kansas City, including 6 Fitzpatrick interceptions. They would lose that game 24-3, and next week Fitz had 3 more interceptions against Seattle, giving him 9 interceptions in a 2-week span. Yikes. He had some decent games and was eventually benched for the younger Bryce Petty towards the end of the season. Everyone knew his Jets career was over, and that was made a reality when the Jets avoided his contract at the end of the 2017 season. In that 2017 offseason, Fitzpatrick later admitted that he was on the brink of retirement, saying that 2015 was very fun, but 2016 was the toughest year of his career. He claimed that he came back because he still enjoyed playing and received a one-year deal from Tampa Bay to back up former first overall pick Jameis Winston. Fitz was now 35 at this point and seemed like the next veteran quarterback to flare out of the league after a disappointing 2016 season the last time he played. Well, the best was yet to come apparently as Fitzpatrick replaced an injured Jameis Winston in week 6 after a shoulder injury. He finished that game throwing for nearly 300 yards and 3 touchdowns, but did throw 2 interceptions and in an eventual loss versus Arizona. Fitzpatrick and Jameis Winston were subbed in and out throughout the season, but Fitz played well during his time on the field. He played in 6 games in 2017, only starting 3, but went 2-1 and one in that time with a 7-3 touchdown to interception ratio, an 86 quarterback rating, and averaged only 183 passing yards per game. The Bucks finished 5-11 in 2017 and obviously missed the playoffs. In 2018's offseason, Fitzpatrick signed another one-year deal to stay in Tampa, but this time lucked into some playing time as he often did throughout his career. The projected starter for the Bucks, Jameis Winston, was suspended by the NFL for three games for a prior incident that happened a few years ago. Fitzpatrick was named the temporary starter and looked to have a three-game showcase to show himself once again before Winston returned. In Week 1 at New Orleans, the Bucks were over 10-point underdogs and Fitzpatrick and the Bucks' offense exploded for 48 points and an 18-point victory. Fitz threw for over 400 yards, 4 touchdowns, a near-perfect 156.3 quarterback rating, and even a rushing touchdown and no turnovers. In Week 2, he put up another great performance, throwing for over 400 yards again with 4 touchdown passes and a win over the Eagles. Week 3 was a primetime home start against the Steelers, and while Fitz started out very slow, he almost led a late-game comeback but fell short by 3 points. Although it was a tough loss, Fitzpatrick became the first player in NFL history to open up the season with 3 straight 400-plus yard passing games. In Week 4, Winston was eligible to return, but based on the team's 2-1 star and Fitzpatrick off to a great start, head coach Dirk Carter decided to go with the veteran Fitzpatrick instead. Well, as it typically goes, Fitzpatrick's hot streak came to a crashing halt and was benched a little after halftime for Jameis Winston the week he was eligible to return. The Bucks quarterback situation in 2018 was a game of musical chairs as Winston and Fitzpatrick each started over seven games and while each guy showed moments of brilliance, they always came back down to earth and ended up being benched for each other. In his eight games played, Fitzpatrick finished 2018 with over 2,300 yards, 17 touchdown passes, 12 interceptions, a 100 quarterback rating, and an NFL leading 9.6 yards per attempt which really showed his downfield and aggressive style and how it paid off many times that season. In 2019's offseason, Fitz was not retained by the Bucks, but he did land a two-year deal not too far away with the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins had just traded away their starting quarterback Ryan Tannehill, but did trade a second-round pick for a top-ten pick in 2018's draft in Josh Rosen. The expectation was that Fitz would be the placeholder until Rosen was ready to start, and while that was somewhat true, it did not go initially as planned. Fitzpatrick started the first two weeks, and they were some of the worst losses you could possibly have as a team, losing by a combined score of 102-10 in the first two games. Rosen drew the Week 3 start against Dallas and started the next two games after that. After an unimpressive three-game showcase, Rosen was benched in favor of Fitzpatrick for the rest of the season. The Dolphins started off the season so badly that some thought this might be an 0-16 team. However, they picked up their play down the stretch, finishing the last nine games at 5-4, ending the season with a 5-11 record. Fitzpatrick had over 3,500 yards, 20 touchdowns, 13 interceptions, a 85 quarterback rating, and 62 completion percentage in his age 37 season. In this past year's 2020 offseason, Fitzpatrick decided to come back again despite some people 
thinking he would call it a career. Miami selected quarterback Tua Tungavailoa fifth overall in the 2020 draft, but coming off major hip surgery and being a rookie, the Dolphins wanted to wait for the right time. Fitzpatrick has played really well in 2020, especially lately, having the Dolphins at 3-3 and and currently on a two-game win streak. As we know now, the Dolphins announced over their Week 7 bye that Fitzpatrick would be benched in favor of the rookie Tua. Fitzpatrick admitted he was heartbroken by the move and really thought this was his team, but apparently the Dolphins had this plan in place for a while. They probably could have handled this better and kept Fitzpatrick more in the loop, but I ultimately think the Dolphins made the right choice here. We know who Fitzpatrick is at this point, and the Dolphins are not going to win the Super Bowl in 2020. It's time to get the rookie quarterback implemented into the NFL. If there was one word I could use to describe Ryan Fitzpatrick's NFL career, it'd be unpredictable. He was the type of quarterback that can randomly throw for over 400 yards and 4 touchdowns any given week, but also had a lot of weeks where he looked like a backup quarterback. Not many quote-unquote journeyman quarterbacks in the NFL have a career as illustrious as Fitzpatrick, but to last 16 years in this league regardless of your play on the field is impressive in its own right. No, he won't be in the Hall of Fame and his career is still not over, but the legend of Ryan Fitzpatrick will live on forever.